Maniacs, welcome back to the channel, your local bedhead here. Today we are going to be reacting to another Mythos Paranormal, Paranormal Investigation. Very excited, haven't watched one of his uh, videos in a good minute, so uh, if you guys like this type of content, you guys know what to do. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, go support the original video, of course, by Mythos Paranormal, who I think is a, a genuine gem on the uh, platform. I really do, I really do. He does a lot of things that I want to do in my Paranormal Investigations, which is one of the reasons why I want to watch him and see how he does. And also, big shout out to Mythos, because he recommended the... Um, the night vision camera I have now, and uh, we'll be using in my paranormal investigation here soon, and the video will be up in October. But, you know, I'm excited to post it, I'm excited to get something out there finally, I never had a paranormal investigation done before, so, and, and film for you guys, so yeah, this is exciting, it's, it's really exciting, I'm genuinely, I'm thrilled. So, uh, yeah, again, go support the original video, let's go ahead and dive into the video, and I'll give you guys my thoughts during and after it. By the way, if you hear that in the background, that's the air conditioner. It's over 100 degrees outside, if I turn that thing off, I will burst in the flames here on camera. Welcome to Richmond in North Yorkshire, England. We're going to do a quick tour of some spots here and then later join me in the dark as I try and talk to the dead. Who's that? Someone fucking with me? <laughs> I, can I just say, man, I love your opening. I'm trying to think of an opening I'm gonna use for my, my videos, I don't know yet. Your local bedhead's here? Tell me if that's good. Your local bedhead's here. I mean, that technically, there'd be three of us, so I guess I'd have to be bedheads. Your local bedhead here. You know what, we'll get there. So first, I am at Richmond Castle, built by a companion of William the Conqueror, Sir Alan Rufus, better known as Alan the Red, in 1071 after the Norman Conquest. This castle is one of the best preserved Norman castles in England, and there are only two other stone-built castles that are as old as this one, which are in Colchester and Durham. But why am I here though? Well, there are a couple of ghost stories here and one from someone very famous. Although the first one sounds like someone may have been smoking something they shouldn't have. I am dead. It's still a popular story yep. that gets told. Have you heard of King Arthur and the Knights Bill of Cosby, the Round Table? I think. It's said that this may be their resting place. Legend says they are sleeping below the castle in a cavern, awaiting the day they return to defend the realm in England's greatest time of need. You see, there was a man named Potter Thompson. He was on a long walk, eventually finding himself along the river here next to the castle. As he stopped for a rest, Potter noticed an opening in the rocks below the castle. He investigated and had a look inside, and he saw a long passageway with a faint light at the end. He walked down there towards the light where he found himself in a cavern surrounded by a sleeping king and his knights in full armor. Potter instantly recognized the royal figure as King Arthur due to the horn and the legendary sword Excalibur, which were both resting on a near side table. Excited by this find, Potter Potter decided to take Excalibur so he could prove to everyone that his story was true. However, as he removed the sword from its sheath, the sleeping knight began to stir. He was so scared and quickly decided to leave the cave. As he was leaving, he heard the king shouting, Potter Thompson, Potter Thompson, if thou hadst either drawn the sword or blown the horn, thou wouldst have been the luckiest man that ever yet was born. Once outside and able to regain his composure, Potter turned back towards the entrance only to discover the opening had disappeared. He frantically searched the rocky banks of the castle, but never again located the secret access. Wow! Even if it was like, <laughs> literally someone smoking something, that is a cool story. That is a really neat story. And scary and terrifying once revealed to him. I have no idea what that was all about, but it's a pretty fun story. Yeah, it's but, cool. Although, absolutely ridiculous. But the next- It is ridiculous, but I love folklore like that. I love tales like that. I think they're so neat. Even though, yeah, most of the time they're probably not true. It's just a, a tale someone make up, like a ghost story we would tell today, and then it'll be passed on for generations and generations. It feels like probably something along those lines, but could you imagine that in real life? That would be insane. 
At first, I thought he was going to say, like, they tried to kill him or grab him, but, like, the fact of the matter is that the king actually started yelling, and you'd have been the luckiest mother, <laughs> been the luckiest son of a gun if you had actually pulled that, that sword out of that sheath and that gotten away with it. story is very real, and it also starts here at the castle. So, obviously, this castle is a walled castle to defend from invaders. Before this story takes place, around that time, us English were going up to Scotland to fight. The Scots came down here to fight, so there was a tunnel built as an escape route just in case the Scots managed to get inside the castle grounds. Many years later, though, in different times, a rumour was going around that there was a tunnel. The soldiers at the the time were getting very worried as it could be used by access from the enemy. They went on the search. They eventually found it deep in the dungeon, but unfortunately it was partly collapsed and the entrance was now very small. Too small for a soldier. So they got one of their drummer boys, who I presume didn't put himself up to the task. Drummer boys were around 10 to 12 years old, which was obviously too young to fight, so they beat their drums as the armies marched into battle. They told him to follow the tunnel and bang his drum, and they'd follow the sound above to figure out where the tunnel ended up. Now, That's risky. Now, just think how scary that would be. Yeah. 10 years old in a dark tunnel underground with just a candle and you had to bang your drums and the sound of that alone in the tunnel would have been freaky as hell. So It would have been freaky and so risky. <sighs> oh, I could imagine. Followed the sound of the drums from the castle through the market and then down towards the river and then past it. Heading towards Easeby Wood and Easeby Abbey. It looks like the rumours were true. There is a tunnel that leads from the castle to the abbey. If you look on maps, from the castle to the woods or the abbey is around 1.5 miles. That poor kid was walking underground, banging his drum, holding his candle for one and a half miles. The only trouble was when the soldiers got to the woods, the banging was louder and faster and then it stopped what do you think happened did the tunnel come to an end was it caved in did behind him collapse did the candle finally go out well they didn't hear anything under them sound like it collapsed okay so it's time to head back and dig out the tunnel to find him right oh no the sudden sound of his erratic drums and then the sudden stop made the soldiers think the boy was taken, attacked and eaten by some sort of monster or demon from hell. They were too scared of what lurked down there to go and look for him. So they left him there and sealed up the tunnel. There's a mark in memory for the boy at the spot where the- That is so fucked up. They left that kid down there and said, oh, well, he, he died an honorable death. No guarantee, he, what if he got knocked out? Right, what if some actually something fell on him and he got knocked out or something and just left down there? That's kind of heartbreaking. Drumming stopped. Absolute crazy story, huh? But what's freaky is people still say they hear the drumming of the boy underground. Now, I've been here countless times and I've never heard that, but I've never been at night and asked out for the boy. Shall we try that later? But I'll yes. be honest, if I hear those beating drums, Jumanji style, I'm out of here. <laughs> So I'm at Easeby Abbey, but no, of course, this isn't the Abbey. This is its gatehouse and- It'd only get really scary if you if you were running away from the drums, only to hear them getting closer to you. Original entrance. It was once surrounded by a high wall and you had to pass through here. This was also the place where the poor people outside of the Abbey would come at the end of the day to get any leftover bits of food from the more wealthy monks who were inside the grounds. Now, there's nothing really spooky here, but I thought with this being the original first place you'd see, I thought, let's start. Here. What I read before coming though, which blew my mind, it said that this was the point where the first cross was placed to mark these grounds as religious. Following that, then St. Agatha's Church was built right across the road. Now, I did read that there was a replica cross here of the original one built in the year 800. That's right, not 800 years ago, the year 800. But unfortunately, I just can't find it, so I don't know where that's meant to be. I guess now we've passed through the gatehouse, let's go and check out the abbey. So look at this. We used to come here as kids and run around the walls and balance along them. And I just never knew the history of the place. You might be wondering what's happened. 
Why is it in ruins? Well, many years ago when King Henry VIII was around, it was destroyed. The king being the king, he also wanted to be ruler of the church in England and Wales, partly because he wanted to divorce one of his wives and divorce was illegal. So if he became the ruler, he can just make up what he wants, can't he? And he thought that the monks would stand in his way. He said that the monks weren't behaving the way they should. They were expected to lead simple religious lives, offering shelter and food to the poor. Henry believed that this was no longer true and they actually led him moral and wealthy lives. In 1534, he passed an act of parliament and made himself the supreme head of the church. After all, oh my. he was gonna tell him no. Then in 1536, he ordered the abbeys and nunneries to be closed. There was a fight back against the king and his religious changes and the closure of these places called the Pilgrimage of Grace. The religious rebels and monks were defeated though, and the ones who lived were ordered to be hanged. Because of this rebellion, the abbeys weren't just closed down, they were destroyed. It's almost funny at this point when people say they've seen a monk ghost, but after hearing all of the monks here were killed, it's not a shock people have reported over the years seeing mysterious figures walking around here who look like monks. Okay, so as you can see, it's getting quite dark now. The sun's going down. I'm just waiting until it gets a little bit more spooky, and then I'm going to- I love the fact that you go really into these ghost stories. I like the way you tell them, too. Kind of makes me feel like I'm watching an old classic TV show where we're just talking about ghost stories. I, I kind of like the way you're handling this, man. It actually, it's cool. I dig it. See if I can find any monks and see if they want to talk. Creepy place, huh? This is the gatehouse which you've seen before. I just wanted to come and check it out, to be honest. Like I said earlier, there's nothing really spooky here. Uh, although it's a bit creepy now, isn't it? But there's no stories or anything here. I just wanted to come and have a look. Your footsteps just scared me. There we go. So I've kind of just done like a little tour around the place just to, you know, kind of make sure there's no one here for a start, but just to check it out. And um, it is a pretty damn cool place. I've not been here in absolute years. So it's pretty cool to come back. Uh, although it's freaky to come back now when it's pitch black, <laughs> you know, that's pretty weird. But um, such a cool place. Look at this. It's hard to see in night vision though. What's so creepy down there? It looks like there's someone stood. Zoom in. Oh, we can't see. I think it's another door through a door. It looks as if there's someone stood in the doorway. It's too dark, isn't it? But when you do that. That's so cool. Can't see it. I actually, I actually bought a, a light that is going to go on top of the camera, hopefully during night vision. So it's going to help. I hope with the brightness of it. Cause, uh, yeah, we definitely need, we, we need the, uh, cause that's, that's clear as day right there. I love that. Love when the I way it looks. Torch off, it looks like there's someone stood in that doorway. See if it, we'll pick it up in the night vision now when I turn the torch off. There, it's there. <gasps> Can anyone see that? I can't. We're gonna have to brighten this thing up and gone. What is that? Gone. What is that? It's a plane. It's a growl. It's a demon. So, um, do you think it's maybe about... Yeah, just should have owned that moment. <gasps> Fucking start booking it and running. Do that typical thing where the camera falls and like rolls a little bit and then lands and you see yourself running off in the distance. The time we kind of uh, start calling out for some monks because as we know, um... <sighs> They didn't survive, did they? Now, I've noticed what that shadow was before through the door. There's another, well, it looks like another doorway all the way over there. It must have been that. It's got to have been, but I can't see, you see. Wow, I tell you what, there's a lot of windows in these ruins and it looked like someone just passed by on one. I'm gonna just try and flip this round and show you what it kind of looked like. You see that dark bit? 
it's just a window on the other side isn't it but I got a bit of a shock there because it looked like there was just someone there you know when you're walking okay so that was pretty strange up in the window it does freak you out because it's so dark and then when you see those other dark spaces through the darkness it kind of looks like something I won't lie guys this place has actually got me um, shook up a bit to be honest and you know why it's not because of any um, spirits or anything like that it's people other people because this is a place where people come at night sometimes just to get spooked good place for it kind of takes me back to my childhood a little bit even knowing we didn't have like a, a rock fortress you know a stone fortress to go to uh we had a behind our house back in washington we had a giant we had a whole bunch of blackberry bushes that, that were going they were so tall so tall and they went up so high and we kind of cut out a hole in the center of all of these blackberry bushes and put a small little kind of bench in there and we tried to put like cardboard up against the, the sidings of it and we made ourselves a little fortress and we would go back there just to like talk about spooky stuff and play pokemon cards and I don't know why, it's just, man, being a, being a kid and having the ability to go out and do stuff like that, there's something more special about doing things like that than even, like, getting on your computer, watching YouTube videos, and, and it's just it's just an experience, and you really won't know unless you actually had, had the chance to go out and do something like that. I, I just, it takes me so much back to childhood. I love nostalgic memories. Really makes me, uh, puts a smile on my face. I'm, I'm hoping with some of these investigations that we do, I get a little reminder of some of the better times of my my youth, you know? And uh, I kind of just want to come back in here. So it's kind of more of a, a room instead of just kind of out in the open, you know? And uh, there's these cool spots here. I don't know what these were, but maybe we could place some devices on them. Now, what I am aware of, guys, and what's kind of been worrying me all night is that light in the distance yeah there's actually a little house here which uh, I didn't know I never knew that was there and there's actually two cars there music on and stuff it sounds like they're having a little party so that's partly why I wanted to walk around and just check is there okay so now when you say like is someone fucking with me I'm sitting here thinking that they noticed that you were paranormal investigating and decided that this would be a good opportunity to pull a little stunt. You know, that's one of the things people were kind of telling me, you know, I shouldn't be telling people when I'm going to be going to the, the Blair house. Because <laughs> they're like, yeah, if there's anybody who is aware of it and they're around that area, they're going to try to pull pranks on you and stuff. And I'm like, I really hope not. Guys, please be mature. Please be respectful. If you know I'm going there on the 7th, have some class, let me do my investigation. Let us do our investigation and have fun doing it and take it seriously. Is there anyone out here? Am I definitely by myself? With me having my torch on now as well. Just because I have to, because like, look at these things all over the floor. I just need it on, otherwise I'm going to end up on my face. They're going to be able to see my torch if they look out over their uh, room. So you know, you know what people are like, the prank people and stuff. What if those are kind of the people who uh, are going to jump through one of these doors now and give us a fright? All right, guys, so I think it's maybe time we should put some devices down, right? You never know. Something might set something off. All right, so I'm going to try and not go up to that bit now because uh, I don't want to set that off by accident myself and get a jump. Okay, so I'm just going to start calling out to any spirits that are here if there are any here and I know this place was filled with monks one time I come here with nothing but respect I genuinely want to talk to you all I want to hear your story find out what happened here because I understand it wasn't good if there are any monks here do you want to talk? I'm not sure how many people come here to talk. If you're wondering who I am, 
You can call me Mythos. That that lens flare right there just gave me a slight heart attack. Okay, his camera right there. Look at this lens flare right here. Does did that not look like a sh a shape or a form walking towards the camera? And if you want to let me know you are here, and then we can go from there. But first, I need to know if there is anybody here. Now, don't be worried or anything. You might not understand what these are or recognize them. They're just technology from our time. Hey, Mythos, I don't mean to pause you again, man. Can you tell me what kind of microphone you're using on your jacket? I think that's a microphone. I'm trying to find some right now that I can use. Uh, I'm going to have to buy three of them, more than likely. But if you could tell me which ones you're using, um, I'd really appreciate it because I'm trying to get my equipment like right now. And I don't think they're meant to be really used for this, but people say if you go near that, it's just a black box, but you see the thing coming out of it. If you touch that, then that will light this box up and let me know you are around. And on the other pillar down there, there's another black box. That one plays music. There was a lot of new music played here one time, wasn't there? Now this black box is facing this door. I bet you used to come through that door often, right? If you want to hear the music, all you've got to do is walk through there. Some people would say that bug was a it off. orb. Do you want me to show you how? Okay, all we've got to do is just walk in front of it like this. As easy as that. Can anyone do that for me? It's very quiet in here. Does anybody want to talk? Are there any monks around? Oh, this is freaky, isn't it, guys? Walking around here now. I wonder what this room was. Got to be careful of that drop off there. I'm just calling out to any monks. Are you around? Did anyone hear that? Was that someone knocking? Are you around? At first I thought, at first I thought that knock was the camera kind of going out of zoom, you know? But if you heard it outside of that, then yeah. I, I don't know what that was. Could have been just the Shit, rock. I nearly went down there then. Right, the stone, maybe? Maybe? It didn't sound like that though. It actually did sound like a knock. I feel like if it was like, you know, a stone falling, it would have made a different kind of sound. But that actually did sound like a... Like a... Did someone just knock? So yeah, the thing is about coming out these places, talking to walls, talking to the air, it makes you think, doesn't it? You know, is there anything? Who knows? Because, you know, I've always believed. But then to be honest, the beliefs have changed over time. So one thing I've just thought actually, um, you know, people call them monks um, because, you know, that's what we've come to call them over the years and that's what they look like and things. Um, but they didn't actually call themselves that. So me calling out for monks, they might be thinking, 
we're not monks, bro. I'm not going to answer you. So I'm just going to look up what they were originally called again because I've forgotten and then maybe I can call out for that name instead. So. Ah. So they were called Cannons, which is pretty funky, isn't it? Yeah, that's weird. And they called themselves White Cannons. So I apologise. You are not monks. You called yourselves White Cannons. I'm sorry. Is there any white cannons here instead? I like that he, uh, I do, uh, like, I actually really like that you looked it up and actually tried to get more specific. I think that's, um, you know, try to match the time period of which they were called. I think that's pretty smart. I got one of those. I'm going to pack up here now and head towards the drummer boy stone and see if we can try and talk to him and hear some drums. Okay, so I'm going down past the river. That explains Just the, the noise. As the soldiers on the drummer boy walk. And as you can see, it's absolutely pitch black, which I guess it would have been then as well, right? I mean, what are they gonna have? A couple of candles, pretty crazy. But the thing is, this is this black now, okay? Imagine what it was like underground, but that kid would have just been absolutely terrifying yep now they've marked it off with this tape so you don't wander off into the river which is quite good because kind of is a place where it looks like you would get lost especially at daft o'clock at night like me right now i don't feel so bad now i've been in here for you know a little bit but when i first started walking into the woods i was thinking this looks like a bad idea. You guys think this is a bad idea? Let me know. Would you go wandering in the woods by yourself? I've done it. I've done it. <laughs> I've been in um, the woods around like, gosh, one in the morning by myself. It's not a good idea. Especially when you hear a pack of coyotes off in the distance and you're by yourself with a flashlight in your phone yeah, yeah, no, rushing out, grabbing your bike, and riding the hell back to your house, it's not fun. To find a ghost. Found a pack a of coyotes. Boy, you know, you've got to remember that, haven't you? You know, it's not just some spooky, like, uh, horrible thing. He was a kid. But what people say happens along this walk. And when you get to the final spot where he was, is you hear the drums, the banging of his drums, because apparently, you know, he's still banging his drums underground. And just think, guys, isn't it crazy how... It kind of sounds like uh, the idea and concept of residual energy. So maybe like that was something that uh, he was so used to doing, and that's the place he died. And maybe that's just... It was such a traumatic experience and a traumatic event that happened. Him crawling through those tunnels, just beating his drums. I mean, I could, I could see that being residual, uh, for sure. I, and people have said that too, like, oh, you know, you go to this location, you can still hear the screams of certain people who were massacred and and things along those lines. You can still hear the scratching at the door where she tried days to try to get out and stuff like that. I feel like if it was anything, it could be residual. Those soldiers thought it was a hell beast, some monster a demon who took him, devoured him underground, and they were so frightened to go down there. Isn't that just wild? No, oh, yeah. A little farmhouse over there. They'll be wondering what I'm doing. You don't want to fall down there, do you? Trip over them and end up in the water. Legit though, think about that. It could have been anything. The kid could have been still 100% alive, but he was so far deep into this tunnel that there was no way just to run back as fast as he could and get help, you know? For all I know, he could have been, like, walking through the tunnels and all of a sudden fallen over and broke them. And broke his drum. For all we know. I mean, that easily. Easily. But nobody would have known because they automatically went to the idea that, oh, something demonic's down there and took him. 
obviously, you know, today in today's society, there would have been a search party. They would have went under there. They would have looked for him. They would have found him. And but back then, it's like if somebody goes missing out of the nowhere, they would start saying it was a beast, right? A- immediately. It's 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 kind of sad when we sit back and think about it. Like it's really tragic what happened to that kid. For all we know, he could have been still under there. Maybe like he was. When they say that he was beating his drums, maybe that was actually him still alive. That's a scary thought. Like, I just said, you know, he could have broken his drum. No, but maybe he actually was hitting his drum, hoping that somebody would hear his drum after they sealed that, the thing, right? And nobody answered. They're, they're just thinking, oh, it's a ghost. But it could have been him actually trying to get help. Wow. It's kind of, like, dark and horrifying when we sit back and think about it. I'm just checking. <laughs> I better hear some drums. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm going to be disappointed. No, I won't really. I mean, you can't just expect to come somewhere one time, can you? And Automatically. experience something. I mean, I guess that's why people um, go back to the same location many times. Because what's the chances of going there one time and you experiencing something, experiencing something that people talked about, you know, this or that's happened, what is the chances? Very, very slim. So, although, you know, sometimes I see YouTube channels going back to the same place, I'm like, oh, actually, it's a really good idea. Yeah. I like it, to be honest. Gives you more chance of finding something, doesn't it? Yep. So, my one time here, Who's that? Hello? Who's that? So in this moment, I heard a lady talk, I'd say a meter or two behind me, and I didn't even think ghost. I thought there was someone trying to prank me. My immediate thought was someone was there. And when I realized there wasn't, I genuinely fully thought I have caught a spirit voice. I'm going to go over this properly at the end of the video, so please make sure you stick around and check that out. Okay. Who the f was that? Did you guys hear that? Who's there? Someone fucking with me? Could you imagine if I came out of the bushes just going and doing that thing I did? That's pretty cool. Oh fuck. <laughs> now I your parent chills on my fear. Yeah, now your paranoia is gonna kick in. If you heard a voice, that that is a genuine fear of mine. How am I going to react if I actually catch a voice? Like if I actually hear it with my own ears and catch it on camera, how am I gonna react to that? I'm gonna be frozen. Hello, little cat. Was that the bastard cat? <laughs> I was just thinking the same thing. Like, yeah, hocus pocus. You can talk. Yeah, no kidding. Now grab the spell book. I'm keeping the torch on after that mother. Who the freaking hell was that? That was not the cat. Someone spoke to me. Someone literally spoke to me. I'm not joking. I can't wait to try and hear that back. So I'm only going to stay here for a minute because I'm freaking exhausted. Would love to hear some drumming. Cats stay here for long. Jesus Christ. Getting like absolutely bombarded. Yeah, it looks like there's bugs everywhere. Please, if you're around, drummer boy. I'm so sorry for what happened to you. I wish you never had to go through that. Do you think you can bang your drums for me? One last time just to show me you're here. 
I could only stay 10 minutes. Couldn't deal with that. Already just out of that spot, I'm not getting attacked. Okay guys, back through the forest. I was doing my little bit to the camera to say thank you for watching and please subscribe because I thought the night was over, but maybe it wasn't. Did the drummer boy want me to hear those drums after all? Please tell me you can hear that on camera. I think I can. I think I can. Holy shit! What is that? What is it? What could it be? Still recording, right? I hope you can hear that. I heard I heard some it's, slight things. Obviously, the, it seems a little far in the distance, just a smidgen, but it sounds like I could hear slight things. Sounds like drumming. Sounds like banging of drums. As I'm getting up here, the the water is getting louder, though. That's the only problem. It's getting very loud. That's the original uh, steps you go down to go into the woods. This Sorry, I have to try I have to turn it up every once in a while because the air conditioner in the back uh, is making it hard to hear. But I did hear the vibrations of like a, some sort of banging going on. Top way is a better walkway, but I thought we would uh, go down there into the woods the same way as the soldiers would have done, because they walked along the river. And there is a, uh, a theory out there that says water, like a river, could actually create energy and help spirits, you know, help spirits be able to communicate a lot more. Okay, so I have never had chills on my face before. Like, um, I've just seen a shadow, but I think it's my torch. Um, someone spoke to me there, bro. I am not kidding you. And then I've just heard drums. Like, that sounded like drumming. I really hope that's picked that up. That really freaked me out. Really give me a shock. Hey, I didn't run, though. No, you didn't. I didn't run. But... I don't know what that was. I'd be too scared to run. I'd be doing that typical cat thing, you know, when they're about to get into a fight and they slowly start backing up. That's what I would start doing. So yeah, it got me a little bit shook up and I didn't know what that was, but now I'm back here, let's check things out. So the first thing I wanna look at is that drumming sound because obviously I didn't think it was literally ghostly drumming. It was banging and things like that. And I was like, what is it? It sounds like drumming, but I didn't think it was drumming. So taking a look at where I actually was, it kind of makes a bit more sense of what it could be. So let's look at Google Maps. Okay. So as you can see here, Easeby Abbey, there's the church and the gatehouse which we were at. You get to the Drummer Boy Stone from this way by going along this path. You actually have to go past this person's house. You literally walk through their front drive. It's pretty crazy. So you come down past this field. You can see this huge mansion up there. And this is Easeby Woods. Now, if you look at it, 
There's a lot of people around. When you're in Easeby Woods, I mean, even in the video, I think I called it a forest a couple of times. You're in there, you think it's huge, you think it's a giant. It's really not, yeah. There's a lot of a lot more people around that area than I thought. And plus, you said there was a car of people at the location. So you can't, you know, you can't ignore that. That might, that's, uh, yeah, yeah. It could have been very much anything. In Woods. But looking at this map, it actually looks pretty pathetic. So this top bit here is the top walk, which you can do, which is kind of a chilled walk. But I went down to the river, didn't I? Because the soldiers went down the river to follow the bangs of the drums. So I come from this way. I went down here, past the river, through this huge woods. I got up to around about where the drummer boy stone was. It was maybe around about here or so. And bearing in mind, when you are around this point, look what's around. A swimming pool, a beauty at Liberty, Liberty Health Club, Archer's Ice Cream, the, sta the station. There's a cinema over there. All of this stuff. A cinema, a swimming pool, which would have been closed, but... I mean, would the cinema have been open late at night? I don't know, but... If that's playing movies, it could have been music from the Bloomin' Cinema. There's car parks and things around here. There's all of- I don't, I don't know about that. I don't know because it's like, yeah, that's not, you know, it's close, but it's not like close enough to where I would expect the inside of the, if it was like a drive-in theater, maybe, I guess. Uh, though people are in their cars and they turn on their stereos to hear the the thing, but I think they also have audio on that. But it's not like, it looks like a, um, a drive-thru it looks like an actual theater so i'm guessing that you know the movies are playing on the inside but i would have uh, i would look at the times they open and see it's if residential you know housing yeah so it could have been a party going on so if i was literally hearing music and banging of drums it could have it could been, have been from any of this which i didn't know was as close as it is so i'm not ruling that as paranormal at all which i wasn't anyway yeah. i was just way confused because i was literally calling out can you let me hear your drums and then i heard boom 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 i was like whoa <laughs> <laughs> it was just very yeah. weird timing. So all of these reports over the years when people say they go there and they hear the banging of drums, are they hearing banging of drums or are they hearing things coming from this residential area, the cinema, which is going to be playing movies and music on the movies, you know? So yeah. I think that is that for the banging of drums. So the other thing that actually really freaked me out, uh, not at the time because straight away you can see that i go on to say nothing's really happening here and things like that but watching it back in editing i'm actually a bit like hang on a minute what was that and it was just that little knock when i said is anyone there or does anyone want to knock for me to talk or whatever i said i can't remember but there was a little knock and i've only realized in editing how weird that was because you can hear me walking around my footsteps crunching on the pebble stones on the floor and the woods man the woods are so and anything outside are it, it most of if not everything can be contaminated so easily like you just said how you pointed out all of those places next to the woods that you were just at the river could be pushing rocks and knocking rocks into the river i mean uh, animals could be banging stuff against the trees it's just there's just so much and like the cat right the cat was right there uh it could have meowed it could have made a weird noise some cats make weird noises when they meow it literally could have been anything outside and that's one of the reasons why like i love the woods i'd love to investigate woods but i feel like that's why i would do cryptid hunts if anything if i went out to the woods and investigated cryptid hunts because well mainly because there's a lot of wildlife and animals and things like that so i could debunk a lot of that stuff as being just an animal or a river or whatnot but if we actually catch like you know an eight foot tall hairy individual running across the woods and you know knocking trees down as i'm running towards it then that's pretty next level <laughs> But yeah, yeah, with the paranormal in the woods, it's just a, it's a very odd mixture because like anything could contaminate anything, right? A bird landing in a tree, landing in its nest, making crackling noises when nobody's moving, things like that. There's just so, there's so many possibilities, uh, unfortunately. And this knock, it's not like a knock on stone. I, it's literally a... Yeah. <laughs> I have no explanation for that. I don't know what it is at all so if someone wants to go and re-listen to that check it out let me know what you think and i'll do a little couple of replays now just so you can hear it
You did say there was a car out there, didn't you? What if it was somebody knocking on the window of the car? Could that be a possibility? Because now I'm, I'm like constantly thinking about that, that those people that were in that car on the property. Yeah, that knock was pretty strange. I mean, it's just a knock. But when there's no one around yeah. at all, and then you hear a knock, it's like, what the hell is that? So about the voice I heard, this freaked me out. As you can tell, I didn't even think ghost. I thought there was someone sneaking up behind me and I had my torch in the other hand, a metal torch, which I was literally getting ready to whack around someone. <laughs> So I thought it was people and then when I realized there wasn't anyone there I thought I've got something I have got something and isn't it funny as well because I get home I look on the computer and I'm like ah I'm not too sure but if I didn't record if I wasn't able to come and look back and listen over and over again I would have walked away from that experience thinking it was paranormal. It's just a funny thing to think of. And I could have switched this up and just said, I heard a voice. I heard a ghost. Yep. Even if it was a cat, you could have literally made it sound like, like if you were a paranormal, like one of these fake, faker paranormal channels, you could have literally hid the fact that there was a cat there at all. Let's say if it was obviously a cat meow, right? I'm not saying this was, but let's say it was obviously a cat meow. They would hide the fact that they came across the cat and then they would, they, they would try to make whatever that meow was out to be some sort of word, right? Like they could have made it say, now, and they'd put it on the screen, now. Yeah, they would definitely do that, 100%. Voice. I could have put, help me, on screen yep, and yep. make you think it said help me. You know, just as an example, because that's what everyone does, but listen to this. I'm just not convinced it was a voice now, because at the time, it sounded very feminine, and I fully thought it was a woman. And I could hear a word, like a two-syllable word. But now, looking back, it's got to be an owl or a pigeon or some kind of bird just going, eh, eh. that's it, I think, which is very- Well, a cat, cats make noises like the two. You know, they, they make noises like that. We'll hear it. We'll hear it. Very disappointing because it would have been awesome if it was a paranormal experience. I mean, what do you guys think? Am I just overly putting on a rational head and trying to make sense of it? Oh, bloody hell, was it a ghost? Well, here. Let's do a few more plays of it. And it is quite hard to hear because I was rambling so much. And I wasn't even planning on putting that in the, my video. It was kind of just me talking to myself to keep myself occupied while I was walking through pitch black dark woods. But because I'm talking, it happens when I was talking. So you've kind of got to listen in the background over my voice and over my breath in. So let's take a look. Gives you more chance of finding something, doesn't it? So my one time here. Who's that? Hello? My one time here. Ah, uh, yep. It does sound like an owl. It does sound like an owl. I don't know. Now that you did that, I don't know. That's weird. That's a weird thing. So there you go. Who knows? It's got to have been some kind of bird, right? What else could it have been? Either way, it literally did freak me out. And I thought I caught something. I come straight home. My girlfriend was asleep in bed because it was stupid o'clock at night. I was like, I've fucking got something. I've got something on camera. I have caught a voice. I was literally telling people I have got a voice. But who knows? I know, I feel quite disappointed now that I've been able to re-watch it. But guys, thank you so much for watching. That's the risk. Keep... But that's the risk, man. That's the risk. You go into the, some of these places and sometimes you just, you get disappointed. And that's a reality. I'm just glad that you acknowledged it. Because again, like you said, there would be a lot of people who would not acknowledge that. So I think that, that gives you a lot of credit right there. You have stuck around to this time because it's been quite a long video for me. You know my videos are usually quite short, so I appreciate you sticking around. If you want to go and check out the extended investigation over on the members page, go and check that out, please. And there's also a Ghost Tube Seer session, and that's a, just a little bit of fun, but something more to check out. So thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Good shit, man. Genuinely good, good video. I genuinely enjoyed that a lot. I like your style. I like the way you handle yourself. I like the 
the way you point things out and try not to make everything out to be paranormal. I think that's really important. You know, you sometimes leave it up to the audience to decide whether if that was an animal or if that was really a voice because that one was a little bit tough to, de to debunk. You know, that one was a little bit tough to kind of make out. Now, if I had to guess because you were outside, I would probably say it was an animal, 100%. But uh, it's still something to take notice of, for sure. But I'm glad you didn't like everything. Everything wasn't paranormal. What's that noise? What's that ruffling? What's that... You know, when clearly, like, you know, you're moving some leaves around and stuff and kicking rocks and you're not making everything out to be a big deal. You know, there's animals making up what noises off in the woods and things like that. You know, whether there was wind out there or not, no tree, you know, tree leaves falling and making noise. It, I mean, I acknowledge that because there's like debunk, there's like paranormal investigators out there who would make everything out to be paranormal at that point. And then it would be like people like me or other people watching and saying, yeah, you're kind of outside and there's a lot of nature going on, right? So I dig that, man. That was great. That was great. Guys, go support the original video. Show that video a lot of love. I think it's almost to a thousand likes, so please get it over a thousand likes and if not more, because I would love to see more paranormal investigations like this one. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. Thank you, Mythos, again. I really dig your style. I really want to try to capture some of that in my video. So, uh, big inspiration, man. And by the way, what microphone do you use? Because I really could use some um, advice on that. So, until next time, guys, please do take care. If you caught a chance, three cards, starts is through. You won't be mended.